Further debate? I recognize the member for Beaches East York. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good afternoon, everyone. I will be sharing my time with my dynamite colleague, MPP Bowman. The government has big ambitions to cut red tape, and I do like the color red um, to the member of Oakville. What I am scared of is the green tape that they might cut along the way. I am open to hearing about uh, Bill 69, Mr. Speaker, and I agree that we should modernize the environmental assessment process because, as we've heard umpteen times, it hasn't been updated in 50 years. Um, what I am sure is if waiving the 30-day assessment uh, period between comments as given during the environmental assessment and when it can proceed is the way to do so. Limiting the ability to extend comment periods may jeopardize meaningful consultation on projects. Short consultation periods may unfairly affect environmental groups that do not have enough full-time staff to compile research and responses. And believe me, these environmental groups have been uh, scrambling to keep up to what's happening with this government uh, lately. We've already seen the government suspend these 30-day periods to fast-track its projects, and it seems the bill, if passed, will turn that pattern into law. These periods allow for a thriving and healthy democracy where Ontarians can have a say on various projects. We must allow for more input from the public, not less, and have ample time to digest the comments made and, if needed, action them to ensure our beautiful environment is protected. Let's imagine a scenario where an Ontario environmental expert submits an important suggestion on the last day of the comment period. The government would have no obligation to understand and or action the useful advice given. And this all comes after the government has already eliminated the role of our vital conservation authorities in building regulation with Bill 23. Why doesn't the government want to utilize the skill set and knowledge of these experts? <clears throat> they continue to give themselves more power and authority, spreading their resources too thinly and creating a system where things fall through the cracks without the tape to keep it in place. This bill does seem small and administrative. However, it could have potentially damaging effects. It's a slippery slope for an environmental protections, and I must assess and evaluate Bill 69, knowing the government's track record for maintaining and strengthening said environmental protections. Similar to Bill 23, Bill 69 is proposing the removal of the need for expertise in place to protect Ontarians from future disasters and financial burdens. Advice and consultation is essential in being proactive to combat emergency preparedness and climate adaptation. We saw the role of conservation authorities dwindled down <coughs> excuse me, by Bill 23. Mr. Speaker, conservation authorities were created following the disaster of Hurricane Hazel. This tragedy embarks a memory of Ontario's past that should not be forgotten. In 1954, over 1,000 homes were either destroyed or seriously damaged. The flooding of these homes, built on floodplains, contributed to the death of 81 Ontarians. 81. As a result, conservation authorities were designated duties to protect and regulate land for the safety of communities. They were one piece of a larger puzzle to protect the ecosystem and environment we have and love in this province. I worry about the ramification of Bill 69 now. Knowing that the government <coughs> excuse me, so readily removed the expertise of conservation authorities in the building process. By introducing Bill 69, we are taking away protective measures in place for our constituents. I cannot sit back and watch, yet again, the advice of the experts with extensive knowledge on how to protect us be ignored by this government. How are we going to strive to protect our homes and our environment if we continue to take shortcuts? Think about your residents. Without consultation and advice from environmental experts, our government will only contribute to the ongoing risks and harm towards the environment. We know from the Insurance Bureau of Canada 
that insurance claims from severe weather have more than quadrupled over the past 15 years, and that 10 percent of homes in Canada are now uninsurable related to flood protection. Building in certain areas without sufficient environmental consultation will cost the government and Ontarians in the long run. Bill 69 may speed up the process of getting things built, but we may lose something critical along the way. At this point, I would like more information about Bill 69, so much that earlier this week, my office contacted the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks for a briefing. Unfortunately, the ministry told me they were un unable to accommodate a briefing at this time. If they are unable to accommodate a briefing at this time, how will they be able to make comments on environmental assessments within the current additional 30 days? I worry about them managing their workload. Thankfully, the Ministry of Infrastructure has agreed to do a briefing. At this point, in 2023, Mr. Speaker, the risk is too high to eliminate any tools we need to protect the environment and the people of Ontario from emergencies. We may be cutting red tape, but at what cost? Building sustainably with proper care and consideration to our environment protections is the right and fiscally responsible thing to do. Handing over my time to my colleague. 